Okay, so I'm not here because I've actually finished a book since the last time we spoke. Uh, it's been a really busy couple of weeks, but as it is Valentine's Day, I thought I could do something involving books and love. First, I thought I would do a lot of find all the books that I enjoyed that uh, with, with couples that got together and I really loved the love story. And I realized there wasn't as many as I thought as I was sort of going through the spines on my bookshelves. So I have some of those and I'll save those for last. But then I thought I have all these books, some that I've never spoken about for reason. I love them for reasons that may not be romantic, but are, are interesting. So I just have a couple of books that have different sort of takes on love or how I interpret them. I, you'll see. I have tons of books over here on post-it notes. So we'll start. All right. Book I wish that had not ended with love. Eat, Pray, Love. I thought it was a fabulous book. One of the few nonfictions I've ever read. Hi, Margie. Did I mention I also love her? Margie. So Eat, Pray, Love, I thought was amazing. All the stuff about self-awareness and, of course, the food was awesome because that's another thing I really love is food. And even the stuff with her doing the meditating, even though I don't believe in that, I thought was really fascinating. So Eat and Pray, totally loved. And the love section I enjoyed because it was in um, Bali and it was interesting and there were some really cool character or people that she met. That's my dog scratching the carpet. And then she meets the guy. It just sort of cheapened it for me because so much of this was about her finding herself. And it, as it is in all books, once a woman finds herself, she ends up with the guy as though he's some sort of reward. And this was nonfiction. And I'm convinced this would not have sold and been made into a movie if she had ended up by herself at the end. And that's what bothers me. So, book I wish had not ended with love, but it did. Favorite Jane Austen that has cute love, or something like that, Northanger Abbey. My favorite Jane Austen, and to be fair, I haven't gotten through Emma or Mansfield Park, but I have read all the others. And Northanger Abbey is the only one that was a true page turner for me. And their love story is really cute. Book I love so much I read pretty much once a year. Sunshine by Rob McKinley. It is a vampire novel, but it is not for children or for teens. It's a little darker, but it's an interesting take on vampires, and I, I love it. The main character works at a coffee house that makes huge cinnamon rolls, and for some reason, the baking, I think, sucked me in. Series I love, but don't hear much about. Song of Albion series by Stephen R. Lawhead. I think it's Stephen R. Lawhead. That's what I used to say. Like Stephen Lawhead. Uh, first one's called The Paradise War, The Silver Hand, and The Endless Knot. This is a fantasy series uh, set very strongly with uh, true Irish history or Irish legend. It's the Irish you never really know. I read these when I was in high school. They're, he's a Christian author, and this is perhaps slightly more Christian than some of his other books, but generally he writes really good fantasy, and this is my favorite, and so much that I got like used copies of it. So, series I love but don't hear much about. Biblical character I love the most. Um, so there are a lot of stories in the Bible about various historical per, uh, persons and some of them are more interesting than others and some of them are really famous and well known like Noah and you know Jesus and so besides Jesus because he's kind of a big deal and I sort of you know love him my favorite Bible character uh, is Jonathan who was best friends with King David and Francine Rivers who's one of my favorite authors uh, wrote a, a series of novellas about Sons of Encouragement, and she wrote one about Jonathan. It was the only one I read of the series because it was Jonathan, and I really love Jonathan, and this one's called The Prince. And for those of you who don't know, Jonathan was next in line after his father, King Saul, to be prince, but since God ordained David, this nobody shepherd boy, he stepped aside and became his best friend. He is the best friend of all best friends. So... 
Biblical character I love the most. Book I love where the character doesn't end up with someone. Which is a really hard thing to pull off because sometimes you feel cheated, especially if you're hopeless romantic, cynical, hopeless romantic like me. Whip It by Shauna Cross. It was originally called Derby Girl, but the title was changed when they made the movie Whip It about girls with roller derby. The character, uh, the main character of this does have a relationship, spoilers, but doesn't end up with the guy because he's kind of a jerk. And it's okay. Like, it totally works. And that's a really hard thing to pull off and something I hope to do someday in a future book. So, book I love where the character doesn't end up with someone. Poet I love who writes love poetry, but specifically poet I love, John Keats. Uh, Bright Star being one of his famous, one of my favorites is The Eve of St. Agnes, but John Keats died at 25 and the world, the world wouldn't have been the same had he continued uh, and lived and not died of tuberculosis. His poetry is my favorite. He's my favorite poet and he writes a lot of good love poetry because he was in love with the girl next door and that's kind of sweet too. Character I love in a series I, I'm conflicted about. New Moon by Stephanie Meyer is when we get to know Jacob Black the best. I enjoyed I enjoyed the series. I, I got less and less interested as the time went by, but I love Jacob Black. And even though I think the first book, Twilight, is a good standalone novel, and I thought interesting for what it did with vampires, it was much cooler before the movies came out, New Moon, I'm grateful for because this is the book I love Jacob in. And he's a typical 16-year-old boy, minus a few things, and that's why I like him. And he was a better choice of guy, but I never really wanted him with Bella. Like I said, character I love in a series that I'm still conflicted about. So, to my final end, books that actually deal with a love story that I really enjoyed. And some of these you've heard from me. Pushing the Limits and Dare You To by Katie McGarry. I have other reviews about these. These are books about teenagers that fall in love and me, the super cynical person that I am, actually believed it because of the way it was written. Noah and Echo and Beth and Ryan. It's kind of amazing. So love stories for teens that I really enjoy and actually buy. And then last but not least, my favorite love story in a series of books, and my favorite couple is, I don't know if you know it, uh, Lord Peter Whimsey and Harriet Vane in the Lord Peter Whimsey series, uh, Lord Peter Whimsey Mysteries by Dorothy L. Sayers. If you don't know anything about Dorothy L. Sayers, she was a contemporary of C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien's, one of the first women to graduate from Oxford, if not the first woman. I'm not positive about that. And she's written a lot of novels about Lord Peter Whimsey, a aristocrat who, for fun, uh, is a detective in uh, 1920s London. And there's a lot of books, and I still haven't read all of them, but these three, Strong Poison, Have His Carcass, and Gaudy Knight, are the ones that tell the five-year will-they-won't-they they, between Lord Peter Whimsey and Harriet Vane. And it is... The kind of love that they come to that I hope to have someday. I find it really beautiful and very real and very both intellectual and emotional. They're wonderful if you've never read them. So that is my Valentine's Day post about some books that have love in them and some that I feel a little differently about. Uh, I hope you have an excellent Valentine's Day. If you are single on Valentine's Day, this is my suggestion, especially if that bothers you that you're single. Do something for someone else. Whether you send a flower to your best friend or your parents or your mom or your friend who's been married for 20 years and, you know, perhaps it's not as exciting as it used to be and it will take some of the I'm so alone, forever alone, whatever feeling out of it because you're doing something for someone else. Happy Love Day. Until next time. Peace out.